Okay. Welcome to Miniverse Podcast. I'm Kyle. This is Chris. We're going to talk about Final Fantasy VII. Seven Wise Legendary. Indeed. Yes. A lot of people love this for some odd reason. Kyle does not like Final Fantasy VII, as you can tell. I played it. I'm not. I just don't understand why, but I can understand why now after watching so many like people talk about their experiences during the 90s. And I was a sheltered child back then. So, yeah. I, no, I'm serious. I was a very sheltered child. My parents wouldn't even let me cross my road. Like, as soon as I get the stop sign, you're not allowed to cross it. I'm not even kidding, <laughs> Chris. Only Nintendo games for Kyle. Yeah. But you know what? They're good. At least I had some good Nintendo games. Even yeah. Though, well, I mostly loved Nintendo games anyway. So they were, it, the systems I picked was, were mine. So. Indeed. So that was the only thing I had choices over. And, well, that's good. And, um, yeah. So, um, let's get, but, um, San Diego Comic Con got canceled. Uh, the center got converted to a hospital, so I'm not really surprised actually by that. Indeed. Um, they said it sounds like every large scale event will be canceled this year, including like the New York Comic Con, which is in October. Yeah. I mean, who knows what's going to happen? Uh, Governor of New York said. You know, this lockdown is at least going to be going until the 14th of May. And I would assume that is what's going to happen on the West Coast as well. Yeah, I'm hearing they're doing a lot of protocols right now, like slowly opening up. Like one of the protocols is it's doing what ANC was practicing, which is opening up theaters to half capacity. Yeah. Like, although my stepfather's like, I don't, I don't like it. It's still, they should just kept it. I'm like. Howard, at least they're practicing social distancing. He, 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 my stepfather's a surviving cancer patient, so. But I'm trying to tell him he has to think about it from, like, people, they can't just be cooped up in their house like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, everybody needs to get back to work eventually. And it really comes down to what the new normal will be when it comes to, like, large events. Uh how long this disease is going to last. Uh, who knows if it's going to come back next year. Um, it could be back in November if the winter, if the, you know. It, it really depends on are they going to be able to make some sort of vaccine for this strain of, um, you know, coronavirus. Uh, I think they have made some vaccines for different forms of uh, coronavirus like SARS, but I'm not 100% sure about that. Um, yeah. And, you know, even when these things open up, who knows? You know, in the future, they might have a Comic-Con, but they're only going to let X amount of people go. Yeah, and say, this is sold out. Sorry, we can't let you in. Yeah, but uh, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, you know, everything is different now. Yeah. It's it's just it's just is it's this is it's insane. It's like it's there's never anything like this in the world where everybody's experiencing it at once. Yeah. So like yeah. that's the big thing people don't actually think about that everybody's experiencing it at once. Yeah, the whole entire planet more or less is completely shut down yeah. at the moment. It's it is insanity. But um, now let's talk about Final Fantasy VII. Final Fantasy VII is legendary for a lot of reasons. Most people yes. don't know about this, but before Final Fantasy VII was on the Xbox, I'm kidding, it's on, before it went multi-plat, before it went multi-platform, um, or, you know, or Xbox or PlayStation 4, it was actually a place, it, Final Fantasy VII was only on PlayStation. Um... It, it was only on PlayStation for one year, because the thing is, the game did get released in 1998 to the PC as well. Yeah. So, it, you know... Console-wise, I'm talking about. Yeah, it was on the original PlayStation forever, and that's where most people have played the original, so... But before that, this was kind of a big deal, because Square Enix and Nintendo always had that, but that, yeah, we got a good relationship, Square, we love you, and... We're getting a divorce. What? 
Well, I think the bigger picture with uh, Final Fantasy VII and why it is such a big deal and why it's so, you know, cultural, like, it's very relevant to gaming. Um, it has a lot of iconic moments. But the biggest thing was this, I don't care what anybody says, this is the Final Fantasy game that actually made normal people know about Final Fantasy. Ga- gamers, know, yeah, gamers knew about Final Fantasy, but Seven changed everything for the sheer fact that it was on the original PlayStation. This was like a multi-disc game, which was kind of like, holy crap, how long is this game? Yeah, it I, had... know, I know that's from the decision for Nintendo, because as soon as they said we're doing cartridge, they're like, yo, we have this really huge game. And they said it would take about 16 cartridges just to fit our entire game on here. Yeah. At the, you gotta remember, this is before, like, the these were like, how much memory bytes does the N64 have? Like, 16 memory bytes? Uh, it's very small. I don't know off the top of my head how big the cartridges are. They might even be lights. I'm not sure if they're megabytes. They, they probably were megabytes, but not a lot, you know? Yeah. The point was that Square was like, they were like, it was too expensive, and we can't do this. So they went to Sony and said, hey, we're going to put this on CDs. And, and CDs are were like, Five dollars at the time to to produce them. They were still pretty expensive CDs at the time. It was pretty new technology. But to make my larger point, you could talk more about the Nintendo Rift here. But the reason why I think this game was such a big deal was it was on the original PlayStation. It had you know uh, movie quality music. Oh no, there's no denying that. There's it no had um, you know. Uh, Cutscenes, which C- CGI cutscenes. Yeah, pre-rendered CGI cutscenes, which were really impressive for the time. Um, you know, the main character. Hey, you know, I know a lot of people like don't like him sometimes because of how popular he is, but he looks freaking cool. Like, like at the original, you see this guy he has like a huge sword. He has like crazy spiky hair. You're like, what is this? This is insane. Crazy blonde hair dude with green eyes. Where I've seen this before. Yeah, if anything, this made Final Fantasy mainstream and it also opened up North America to, you know, more mainstream anime because this oh, is like yeah. such a anime plot like the uh, Final Fantasy Seven. But uh that is yeah, I, that a tsunami back in the day. Yeah. I mean, the music of the game is iconic. It, There's no denying that. Even, it, it is probably the like even Sephiroth, main thing a lot of people think of with Final Fantasy now is the music. Sephiroth, Sephiroth's music, even I won't deny, it, is the most iconic out of out of the soundtrack for Final Fantasy. Yeah. Like, like when you heard that for the first time, like you hear the orchestra. Like, if you think about it, like you gotta think about it from the mindset. That was mind blowing. You hearing people chanting his name, Sephiroth, and like what? Yeah, yeah, it, it is insane. But um, you know, it, it's the game that changed everything. Um, oh no, it did. It definitely did. And also, people are like, "What happened to six, five, and four, three? Or like, what happened to six, five, and four? And then they remade those to the PlayStation." Yeah, so I figured I'd put that in there just for you know. What what is your experience with Final Fantasy VII? Did you play it when it first released, or knew with, about it? I played it right after, um, right after high school, actually. Okay, so you played it pretty late. So I, I guess I'll go first because I did play it when it first released. I didn't beat it though, but you know, nineteen ninety seven. I'm going to date myself with how old I am, but I was about nine years old in 1997. Original PlayStation just came out. Um, I think, like, you know, Crash Bandicoot was out by then. But a good friend of mine, uh, his older brother, got Final Fantasy VII. And, you know, we're pretty young. Like, we're still, like, getting the hang of games. But we just watched my friend's older brother play it and just like awestruck like the battles were awesome like the characters 
you know, you saw their full body and their full movements, like the sword swings and everything in battle. And then the music like was on the over map. Yeah, the music was like hyped um, for the battles. It, it was it was the most impressive game ever made at the time. Yeah, there was nothing absolutely like it when it released in 1997. Yeah, in fact, it was one of those moments where. In some ways, you could like argue like all other games are trash compared to this. That's not true, mind you. Yeah. But just of how impressive this game actually was compared to anything out there. Yeah. Was crazy. Yeah. No, I get that. Like, there's a there's a lot of games that I like was blown that that blew me away. Sometimes, like for me, like the game that blows me away just for pure storytelling was persona 4 and that got me into the persona series now so i can understand like why people like if this was their first final fantasy they got into it believe it or not persona made them in ironically persona 5 persona 5 struck them into the mainstream and persona 4 kind of did the little push so I can, yeah i can mm-hmm. understand I, I understand what you're trying to say from there a little off topic I know, but... I'm, just saying, I'm getting i'm just saying comparably i can understand what you're saying yeah um yeah, but the the weird part about seven too was, you know, I, I was a nine year old kid, and the thing was playing this game that had PlayStation. I mean, the game sold like five million copies, uh, which was kind of unheard of uh, at that time. I mean, you know, I'm sure Super Mario Brothers and some classic games have sold that amount, but like. This was a weird freaking game about like environmentalism and like space aliens and this shit. It, it's a weird game when you really play it. You're like, yeah. like this is a weird story, but like so many people were playing it because of how impressive it was in 1997. I wouldn't actually go on to play the game for myself until I was a little older, like you know, 11 or 12 is when I finally played it for myself, but. You know, I was there at least watching, you know, my friend's brother play it back when it released. And, yeah. you know, it was insane. Uh, yeah. But uh, what what is your experience with Final Fantasy VII? When I played Did it, you know I, about it when it first released? Remember, well, I didn't know about anything about Final Fantasy until I got a place, until, like, until, like, I, my first Final Fantasy, believe it or not, was literally on the Game Boy, was the original Final Fantasy. Huh. <laughs> Nice. And I actually beat that one. And I remember when I told you that, you're like, wait, you beat the original Final Fantasy? Yeah. You gave me so much props for that day. <laughs> you're like, I got to give you props. I would never expect you to beat the original Final Fantasy because that game is long drawn out. And I'm like, and I wanted to play it. And I remember it was one and two. And I played it and I was like, I don't get why people like this game. And I like from hearing from you and then, Hearing YouTubers talk about it, how it was advertised, how it was hyped up as well. Apparently, there was like a bus poster for Final Fantasy VII. They were selling ads in movie theaters for Final Fantasy VII. It was almost everywhere. You couldn't even hear about Final Fantasy VII. Sony was advertising it as, this is the big event you should not miss out on. Definitely was. I remember seeing a poster for it in Lowell's Multiplex Theater in Freehold. You proved my point right there. Yeah. It's like a video game at the movie theater. Um, yeah, it, it was it was insane. Uh, yeah. You know, nothing was like it. Uh, the opening in Midgard, where you jump off the train and you blow up the Mako factory. You know, hell, they released it as the demo in the remake. Yeah. And, you know, the remake, you know, I hear is very different. I haven't had a chance to actually play the whole game, but I have played that beginning part and yeah, no, I you know that that's essentially the way the ps4 version is right now is kind of how mind-blowing it seemed to us when it came out in 1997 and just so you know i'm not a big i'm not a big final fantasy 7 fan but this is like to me this is amazing as a remake because you got to remember, you took these little Lego figures and you go little hand motion, and then all of a sudden you see this giant like machine that you face, 
in that game in the original version now fold up and you have to face it in real time combat with cinematics. Like to me, this is a mind blowing remake. Yeah. Um, the thing is, though, I, they only look like Legos when you're walking around on the world. Yeah, when you're in the, the battle, world. they have they have the full sprites yeah, uh, the, or whatever the, the models. Full, the real, the real, like real scale models. Yeah. So, and that's what really, you know, blew people's mind was the battle animation. Oh, sudden they went through puberty. I'm kidding. I mean, you make it all these jokes. I'm sorry. So, I can't Kyle, help it. What, what's your problem with Final Fantasy VII? Any, why? Why don't you I like don't know it? Why? It's probably because I didn't grow up with it. It's probably just because everybody overhyped it, and I'm just like. When people overhype it for somebody, it just kills it for somebody. I think that's what it is. So it's just it's just been overhyped for you to yeah. death, like yeah. But I'm not good. I'm not gonna knock anybody down. You know, like saying it. Like I'm just making like, a good point. Like I'm making jokes about it, saying, "Oh, Sunday well, went for beauty." You know, like you know, it's it's funny. You know. Yeah. I'm not denying. I played for the whole game, and I did it twice. Yeah. You know? And that's because I lost my data, and then I did it again. All although I had my friend. Watch me play stuff off. He starts clomping his face down, and I'm like, "Dude, what? Stop! This isn't a <laughs> concert." <laughs> People like the Sephiroth music. And he, never, um, and, he, and he never played Final Fantasy VII. Oh, I think I know what friend it is. <laughs> yeah, you know which one I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, the one I had back in high school. Yeah, yeah. Oh uh, boy, it, it it's like at least I had the guts to play these games and got the systems that I get. Like I said, I do. Like I said, I still my most controversial Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy Nine, and I own that, and I really need to play that. Like it's just because like it goes too much back to the basics. That's why for me. Yeah, well, I mean, to but, just go on to a larger discussion of Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah, sorry, I went. To um, Final and into regular Final Fantasy, I guess. Yeah. Seven's actual impact on the rest of the series. Oh yeah. I mean seven you know, changed a lot of stuff for the series. It was more sci-fi than medieval, uh, you know, compared to the... Well, Final Fantasy VI was a mixture of sci-fi. It was medieval, but yet sci-fi. Never mind. Well, I mean, it had airships and, like, the mech suits, but... Yeah. No, I was thinking about it, but I was like, never mind. (laughs) Because I I could be wrong, but I don't think any of the Final Fantasies had, like, extraterrestrials like Seven did. Yeah, no, seven, 7 did not have extraterrestrials. Yeah, 7 has introduced, you know, Genova, which is literally from space. Yeah. It also I mean, it's also the main it also thing in the, the game. It's the very first um and Chris we had a discussion before we started about this he hates it. He's like you didn't get it at first. It showed the very first like human protagonist, uh, not protagonist, uh, antagonist, which was Sephiroth at the time. But he was enhanced by the alien cell, which is Genova. Yeah, yeah, it's got a lot of like you know sciencey stuff like human experimentation in the plot, and they, they have a casino in the in the sky. Yeah, yeah, it, it is a weird game. To be honest, it's been a long time since I played it, so I can't really talk too in depth of the story and how like strange it really is. From what little I remember, it is a weird story. Um, yeah. With quite a bit of, you know, twists and turns. One of, you know, the most iconic moments in the game, spoiler, Aerith's death. And this is, you know, it was crazy because you play these games and you're not expecting one of your characters to be dead and dead for the dead. rest of the game. Yeah. Yeah. They were actually, believe it or not, I was watching a video one time. I, I think it was G4. And they said, yeah, I had a choice between Barrett and Aerith. And I felt like Aerith would have been more impactful than Barrett. I'm like, yeah, I agree on that. Yeah. Uh, there was going to kid. The plan was to kill a character off permanently. And they have not done. I don't, I, I don't think they've done a permanent character death in a while. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Like, there are some Final Fantasy characters that die towards the end of the game. Yeah. But, but like mid-game. yeah, nothing mid game where you've been, you know, training this character up. I mean, Aerith is pretty good. She has, like, kind of like some of the healing stuff that's really good. And 
it's like she freaking gets stabbed and you know it's pretty graphic what yeah, happens time, yeah. um, you know sephiroth swoops down and like stabs her through the heart with katana and you're just like what is happening and like yeah it, it is an insane moment in the game uh, I really wonder how what it's gonna be like in the remake. Um, I don't think this first part of the remake is gonna deal with that. But- no, I don't think so. Um, what Final Fantasy VII also built on was get like the graphic engine. Like when eight came out, they're like, let's buff up the graphics engine system to like a cranked up, and you know, like and like it seems like every Final Fantasy game gets better graphically as well and some of the storytelling gets better too except for eight eight is a little weird but that's good i love eight that's me i like i think with eight too eight is kind of like a direct response of how successful final fantasy 7 was because the thing is final fantasy 7 was super successful yeah um and i think what happened with it was literally they said like okay for the next final fantasy game like do whatever you want. And I think that's why 8 is as weird as it is because they just had license to just do as much craziness as they wanted in that game. Like, the battle system is fine in 8. However, the leveling up mechanic is really weird and complicated, and I don't like it. The draw system. Yeah. Yeah. Also, also, like, as much as I like Squall, like you, you are right about that. Like here's this is like what's more badass than a big sword? How about a gun blade? So how did that work? We make the pistol as a handle, and then, and then we take the instead of a barrel, it has a sword. How does that work? Uh, we pull the trigger on it, and we use it as a mechanic. Give that guy a medal. Well, yeah, I, I if anything, eight is kind of like, you know, the Final Fantasy VII was so successful. Let's make another game like Final Fantasy VII, but like amp everything up like in final fantasy 7 you know depending on how strong you are that's how strong uh sephiroth will be at the end we'll make the whole game like that yeah so they were kind of like well let's just like make it like that constantly um you know seven had the summonings eight's summonings are kind of even more amped up uh yeah definitely i love the summonings in eight I, although seven does have like that knights of brown summoning that's pretty impressive as well as, they, um, i know that summoning's like five minutes actually and you could just by the time you got done making a sandwich the summoning would be done You'd be at yeah the end of it. and then there's um like the different forms of like bahamut like i think bahamut zero is in final fantasy seven as well no, or some no. different form of bahamut yeah, gig i actually remember all of them there's Bamahu, Giga Bamahu, and then no, it's Mega Bamahu, and then Giga Bamahu. Bamahu okay. Zero is actually as an is um. I'm trying to remember his name. I'm trying to remember. Oh, Crisis Core original. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm getting a little confused with the spinoff games that yeah. came out later. Yeah. Back in the early 2000s, was it the late 2000s? I, it was late 2000s, right? No, it was early 2000s because uh, it was like 2003, 2004, 2005, so... Yeah, Square Enix got a little crazy with the Final Fantasy stuff because with Final Fantasy VII because they wanted to make money. And um, they were like, let's release a movie. Good idea. That sounds like a good idea. Make a movie that happens right after the game. Cool idea. Uh, let's make a let, let's make a mobile game about like about the Turks. Um, okay. Um, we'll make a game called we'll make a Final Fantasy shooting game called Dares of Cerberus. Um, okay. We'll make a prequel about Zach. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. They there was yeah. so much Final Fantasy around the late two thousands for seven. Yeah. Um, for the spinoffs of seven. Um, I think uh you know the Crisis Core definitely was released later. Uh, maybe was, like 2006 or so. That was like so. the last one. I remember in high school playing that. Yeah, yeah. And I actually yeah. enjoyed that one. I really enjoyed that one. If anything, Crisis Core kind of has the most in common with the remake uh, they just did. Uh, oh, yeah, definitely. Like, you, if you if you play Crisis Core and then go in the remake, you'll be, you'll be fine. Yeah. And then they made, like, the sequel, Dirge of Cerberus, which... 
let's face it, that game was kind of critically panned with how, you know, much it was in love with itself. It had, and I could see where Kyle's attitude towards Final Fantasy comes in. He played it later in high school. Probably he saw like Dirge of Cerberus and nah, how the game I, it was, was just not like because of Dirge of Cerberus actually it's because of you guys actually and OS. well the the game was so like you know in love with its story that it constantly would stop the gameplay and like have cutscene and um square why wasn't this not a movie yeah they're just kind of like look how awesome Vincent is like he's so cool you want to be him. Like, <laughs> Uh, I didn't want to be in where I grow my hair out to that point. No, <laughs> and wear yeah. a scarf like this and be like, and be play- and wish I was played by Stephen Bloom. Yeah, I mean, Advent Children, the movie, I, I like do it. like it, but it, I can see how people say it like misrepresents like the characters. Like Cloud is like totally different and kind of loses all his character development in the game. And, like, the excuse is, well, he's sick. It's like, okay, but, like... He was... He, Chris... Come he, on. He got Chris, over, like, himself by Chris, the... can you say he was social distancing? I guess so, <laughs> to a certain extent. Um, because of, what is it, the geostigma or yeah. whatever, yeah? Yeah, you which know. is just... Spoiler alert, it's just Genova cells. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I could not resist that one. I couldn't. Cause that was like pretty much like hilarious. If you if you watch Evan Children now, you're gonna be like, wow, this is like the coronavirus. <laughs> I should watch that. Like they did release a director's cut where it made it a little bit understandable or like the characters and everything. The action is fantastic in oh, that movie. No um, it. The music and the final awesome. fight between Cloud and Sephiroth is pretty awesome. I love that they they did a metal inter- like a metal version of Sephiroth's One Wing Angel song. Like, as soon as, like, Cloud, like, puts his two swords into a building, and I hear that, and then I was like, oh, my God, this goes too well. Yeah. I was just like, it, that final battle is really good. Because, like, the good thing about that, the about Final Fantasy Seven is, like, you can see Square learned from the previous movie, so. Yeah. So. But yeah, like that's everything we know, like so far, so far about like what Final Fantasy VII did. But it also here's another thing about Final Fantasy VII that we don't that we could say about that did a good job. It made JRPGs a little more mainstream as well, too. Yeah, and if anything, it really uh, kind of started. Even though this was already the trend, but it kind of really amped it up. Of like RPGs should have like the most epic final boss oh yeah like sephiroth like i know like kafka is pretty like crazy but you know sephiroth took it to the next level yeah where you know it had he had his own like music that you know said his name and stuff like kyle said before yeah Um, i'm not gonna deny that i mean he he had like you know, he has a couple of four phases, I guess the best thing to say. His final phase, well, or second to last phase, where he has, like, the weird angel wings on his legs is really bizarre. I wonder how he'll look in the remake. Oh, God, I wonder how this is going to look. You know, but, like, the, the final part of the fight is when you're just Cloud for Sephiroth, and that's pretty awesome. So, I got a good question. What do you think? What do you think? So, what do you think? Do you think Final Fantasy VII's gonna the remake is gonna set the bar for a new how you should make remakes of older games? Yeah, I mean, I'm a lot of people have wanted Final Fantasy VII remade since like the PS3. Yeah, they were like, "Why don't you give us Final Fantasy VII?" And my friend, he kept on doing it. Like, dude, you don't understand. It's free money and everything. It's just. Yeah, but first off, there's a lot of work into it. Second off, I don't think nobody wants to do it right now. Third, 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 I had to explain. They said in their thing, they have to be a Final Fantasy that ha- that surpasses Final Fantasy VII, VII, which I can understand because they want to beat themselves, you know? Yeah. Like, you don't want to, like, that's like, okay, so you want some, so you want where to latch on to nostalgia like a, like a parasite. So... Nope, no pun intended. 
I'm happy for the remake. It's cool. I, you know, I look forward to playing it. Um, I'm looking forward to playing it too. However, you know, I I don't know exactly what's going to happen with this remake stuff, but I do see a trend happening. Because I I think a lot of people have to understand there's differences between remakes and remasters. Oh, yeah. Um, And a remake is when they actually, you know, redo the game from, like, the start, make it, like, completely its own, like, thing. Kind of like what they've been doing with, like, Resident Evil. Yeah, Resident Evil. Unfortunately, I see this trend being good but bad because I think the next couple of years we're going to get a lot more remakes than new games. I agree on that. I re- yeah. I, I kind of agree on that. Like, Resident Evil, like, just proved, like, they just took what, okay, what peop- what parts of Resident Evil people like? Well, they definitely do like re- the Resident Evil 4, like, aiming system and everything, so why don't we remake everything around there? And it's like, th- what what Capcom was trying to do was they took the good of what re- what parts people like about Resident Evil and then adding it and also taking the good of what people liked about Resident Evil 2 and adding it as well. They even, they, they literally went through details. Like if you play the first part, the first part of the game where you're at the gas station, if you look at the gas prices, they're the same gas prices back in the nineties, believe it or not. They're literally, they, they were paying attention to detail. Yeah. That's insane. I mean, I think, you know, with, the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I mean, at the end of the day, this is going to be the new generation's first Final Fantasy. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This will probably be... I don't know how long the remake is. Like I said, I got to get around to playing it, um, which, you know, I- I'm going to start playing it probably even this weekend. Um, yeah. But I can see them focusing on making Seven for a while. You know, who? because it- it's very obvious that part one of i want to say like three or four games possibly yeah depending on if they adapt advent children into the that would actually be pretty cool actually because like believe it or not the models of advent children are a lot older so they had a remake they had to do they were going to use those models but then they were like nope let's just make some new models these are very old yeah and these and the game now looks better than the advent children movie yeah, it definitely does. Um, yeah, but here's a good question. Now with Final Fantasy VII, how long are they going to focus exclusively on the remakes, or are they going to have? Are we going to have to wait a while until we get Final Fantasy XVI? I think we're going to wait wait a while before we get Final Fantasy XVI. To be honest, uh, Unless I think seven a- seven is going to sell like a juggernaut, and oh yeah, from it, what it, I uh, hear, the remake is amazing like a lot of people really like it and depending on how many games they actually do in this seven series of final fantasy you know it's going to be a while before we get actual final fantasy 16 i think yeah and that kind of proves my point about like they want to surpass themselves you know yeah yeah but hopefully like like i said hopefully we get a hopefully like well square they usually try to get like a bunch of people they have different teams within square like they had the Luminous team, so they might just get the Luminous team again. We did Final Fantasy fifteen and say, Hey, can you make Final Fantasy six? And they did not apply they did say one thing. They they would actually might one day have a Western developer develop Final Fantasy one day as well. That'd be interesting. Um yeah. I, I I I'm not a big fan of Western RPGs, to be honest. Uh so I, I would be ones. I would be more I would be curious how it goes uh, with a Western development team, but uh, yeah, it is an interesting aspect because you know I've never really been a fan of like the Skyrim or the Witcher type of style of RPG. Yeah, I like more of the Japanese uh, style turn based type of stuff. Yeah, or you know the actiony stuff like yeah. But like I said, that's that's probably for a, dip, a topic for another day. Um, but that, I just figured I'd bring that up. But well, anyway, so anything else you want to add to this? Do you have anything else? Because I'm I'm trying to run out. Yeah, no, I think I've said enough about Final Fantasy VII and how iconic of a game it really is. And you know, even though some people, Kyle, 
yeah. have a stick up their butt about the game. It did do a lot for the gaming industry. It changed everything when it came out. It yeah. really did. Yeah, and like I said, and, I, like I said, I watch a lot of videos of other people and understanding it better because now I'm a little more mellow about it now than I used to. Yeah. Be, which and you know the original game, of course, looks like a game from you know, 1997, you show, like, a young person that game, now they're like, oh, my God, you know, like Kyle said, they look like Lego people. It's yeah. like, yeah. And it's good they're remaking it, so it's just like, here, you can see the game that the way we saw it when it was oh. new now. Oh, wait, so. you want to talk about the one, hey, there's one controversy I love about the, before we go, there's one controversy I love that is just hilariously stupid with fans. And this is inappropriate at the same time. When they showed the model for Tifa, they're like, why are boobs not bigger? They're not, they're, they're not right. I'm like, I, I'm like, oh my God. It, I, I feel like Square did that just to fix it because to make it more realistic because they're using a thing called the Unreal Engine to make things better. Yeah, I mean, they, they made the people look like real people. Yeah. People... I'm surprised you brought that up. I mean, at the time, it's it was just so because of stupid. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just because, like, like the point. I think it's just because of technology, like you said. Like, yeah. Ah, fuck it. All right. Yeah. They're, and everybody in Japan, everybody in the office, which I I did find something really interesting actually about the original remake. They almost got everybody back from that the original development team, except one of the direct, except uh, uh. The guy who did Kingdom Hearts was the director of, Final, of Kingdom Hearts was doing the Final Fantasy remake. They got almost everybody back. It's including, insane. Including Anamuna, including the guy who wrote the music, uh, Anamuna or something. I can't remember his name. I can never say his name correctly, so I'm not to say it. But so much that so, guy's been doing a lot of Final Fantasy music. They brought him for... back in, too, including one of the compo- even the guy who composed the music, too. So I was like, man, Square... So like there's there's a lot and they were trying to modernize everything you know make it more, you know, yeah, suited to the technology and everything. So those yeah, are little definitely. things I just found out about Final Fantasy VII, like a little bit of development history and stuff like there. Nice. Yeah, but um, it's very cool. this, so we just talked about the development, what the future may hold for Final Fantasy VII, how it's gonna work out, what maybe might happen with Final Fantasy um, sixteen if it might ever happen predictions you know like square does have multiple development teams you know they you never know they might just send luminous to do final fantasy 16 again but um that's the podcast for today um i'm kyle this is chris as always stay inside don't catch the coronavirus wash your hands coronavirus have a nice yeah. day <laughs>